Welcome to Let's Talk Petty. We are not petty, but we love talking about it. We absolutely do. I'm, I'm Andrew. <laughs> uh, nothing like talking over each other to start our episode off. People love it. There's nothing better than hearing two people talk at the same time. It's great. Now no one knows our names. No one. And there's no way for them to find out. According to them, we're just Candrew. <laughs> Maybe we should just start saying that. We're Candrew. It would definitely save three seconds of time, and we'd have three more seconds to talk about other things. That's important. So before we get into my story, I did want to talk about something. I keep forgetting to mention this. It's um, back from our short story of the Titanic. Okay. So I had said... Wait, we did a short? Yeah, that's right. Short story. So I had said that I couldn't remember if the Californian was her sister ship or not. Mm -hmm. So I, I had looked it up and I totally forgot. So I knew she had a sister ship, but she actually had two sister ships, the Olympic and the Britannic, not the Californian. Mm. And it has been bothering me. So I Losing just wanted sleep to. Over it. Oh my God, yes. Tossing, turning, the whole nine yards. Well, they should be able to sleep better now. Yeah. Knowing that factual information is out there instead of just made up stuff. Yeah. Well, I like it to be factual. I'm all about the deets, remember? Solid deets. That's your nickname. <laughs> it is. Oh, that's just what you call me? I'll take it. Good old solid deets. Solid deets. All right. Well, thanks for changing. Ch- thanks for clarifying. Correcting that for us. Correctifying? Correctifying. It. I like that. I was correctifying <laughs> it. Okay, so our story is about two actors. I know every single actor that's ever acted in anything. Anything? Anything. Even, it doesn't matter, stage, movies, whatever. Whatever, whenever. School plays. School plays. You have a lot. Yeah, school plays. I'm working on school plays. I've got every school play that's ever been performed down through like not from ninth to 12th anything under ninth grade i do not have memorized yet then why are you even talking about it you're right i was bragging ahead of time yeah i was you really bragging were. ahead of myself so they are edwin forrest versus william charles mccready don't have those memorized yet they must be eighth graders they they are not okay I can't tell you my title till after I get farther down because, as per usual, I'm making you guess and it gives away You're making me what guess. this is for. Well, you'll see. So, these two are responsible for what is known as the Astor Place Riot. I have heard of that. You have? I was just going to say, have you heard of that? I have never heard of it. I didn't know about all this. I've heard of every single riot that's ever existed. <laughs> You're incredible. I'm a, I'm a vast wealth of knowledge. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> All right. Well, this riot resulted at that time in the most civilian casualties due to military action since the American Revolutionary War. 22 people died and 100 were injured. That's you not said that you bad. know. How many people die in a normal riot? 22 people dying is a big deal. It is pretty bad. And then 100 people getting injured is also a big deal. So guess what the whole affair was over? I'm trying to remember. It was something about acting or an award or something. I mean, it is about acting. Wasn't it about an award one of them thought they won or? No. Okay. There was some sort of controversy about acting and who did what. Yes. It is over who was the best Macbeth. So could have resulted in an award. I don't know if they had award shows like they have now back then. Probably not, but. I don't think they did. They didn't pat themselves on the back like they do now. So best Macbeth. Yes. So my title is Macbeth, you say. I'm the best Macbeth. I am British after all. I'm sure it'll explain itself. Yep. So this event took place on May 10th, 1849 at the Astor Opera House in New York City. Mm -hmm. 
Like I said, it was over which of these two men was the best Macbeth. Now, I have to ask you, do you know anything about the play Macbeth? My good friend Billy wrote it. Mm Mm-hmm. Billy. You love a Billy. Billy Shakes, like I call him. (laughs) You won't call him by any other name. People call him William Shakespeare, but whoever knows him really good, call him Billy Shakes. Yeah, Billy Shakes. No, I really don't know a lot about (laughs) it. You were trying to think of something and you couldn't. Okay. (laughs) Stalling for time. You were. I could tell. So do do you remember, maybe this will trigger your memory, um, because... Well, I know that they, you're not supposed to say Macbeth on the stage. Yes. I don't know about it. I mean, I know the the lore of it, but I don't know. Well, you remember because in Thirty the Rock, play. there's this whole thing. Well, yeah, I knew about that yeah. before Thirty Rock. Yes. Wow. Oh, aren't you? Don't you don't say amazing. Macbeth in the theater. Yeah, you don't say it while inside a theater. Instead, they would call it the Scottish play. Now, <laughs> this is where I I just was. I had to laugh at myself. Did you know that there are several methods used to stop the curse that people could do? I know about method acting. No. I don't know about methods to stop curses. All right. Well, I did at one time have a website that I created called uh howtostopcurses.com. It got a lot of foot traffic. But not enough web traffic, so I had to shut it down. <laughs> it's such a dork. People were coming to the actual physical address mm. with curses on them. <laughs> Did it work to remove their curses? Well, I got rid of a few. Mm. But none of them were Macbeth curses, so I guess this is a new territory for yeah, me. Yeah, this is a new territory for you then. All right, so one of the methods is after this name was said, like say you say it by accident because... You're not thinking about it. You immediately leave the building the stage is in with the person who uttered the name. So say there's a group of you and you're standing there and somebody utters the name. You all instantly just take off running and you go outside the building. You walk around the building three times, spit over the left shoulder of the person who said the name, say an obscenity. And then you have to wait to be invited back into the building. So this is basically a very elaborate twig and plum. (laughs) Okay, let me finish all of these. (laughs) Because they're all very funny. There's only three of them I'm going to talk about. And then we have to discuss it because it's so hilarious. So the second is to... Instantly, you spit around three times as fast as possible on the spot, sometimes while also spitting over your shoulder and uttering an obscenity. The third time is you just leave the room. Then you knock three times, be invited back in. And then when you come in, you can quote a line from Hamlet. Or if you want to, you can recite a line from The Merchant of Venice because that play was considered a lucky play. My question is, why didn't I get into theater just so I could constantly be saying Macbeth and doing these things? <laughs> All I could think about was, this sounds like the stuff that I would do to somebody messing with them. Like, who is going to spin around fast three times while you're spitting over your shoulder and cussing? I would just, this is something that I would have done or I could see you doing just to mess with people who believe in this curse. And it's an opportunity to take advantage of their superstition and get a really good laugh out of it. So I, there's no way all of this didn't come about from like some trickster back then who was like, I'm messing with these people. And they laughed about it like till the day that they died. So when we get our time machine going finally... Mm -hmm. We're going to go back in time to when people were always performing Macbeth and we're going to invent TikTok because I feel like all of these things would have been viral TikTok things that happened. I think that you just came up as to why these things are around. I think we do eventually build a time machine and the whole reason that this is even here is because of us. So you're saying we've already built the time machine? In the future, we accomplish it. 
we've gone back. And that's why people are friggin' spinning around in circles, spitting over their shoulder, cussing. I don't think I've ever spit over my shoulder. No, we wouldn't do that. I'm just trying to, to think to make in general. People do that. You know, instead of salt, where, you know, if you spill it, you have to throw it over your left shoulder. Just taking that and making it, oh, yeah, just spit over your left shoulder. You don't want salt around here, so do it like that. I mean, I'm not a very flexible, stretchy person, so I definitely would be cursed because yeah. I could not spit over my shoulder because I couldn't turn my neck far enough. Well, that's sad. You'd be cursed forever. So I just make thought those that, were too funny. That, that. <laughs> Boy, we're not in a theater, so say it all you want. I'm going to build a theater and say it. You're going to build a theater in here, and I'm going to constantly come home to you running around the house. Oh, did you do it again? I keep forgetting. Anyway, so the story. What happens if someone listens to this while they're in a theater, and I'm saying Macbeth? They'll have to come find you, I guess. Would I have to do it, or do they, since they heard it? I don't know. You're not there, so I don't think it would count, because you're not in the theater. Well, just in case, Macbeth, 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 Macbeth. We should put a warning at the front of this. Do not listen to this episode in a theater. I don't think it would count. I don't think it would do anything. So they can listen away. But the story we are going to discuss today adds to this feeling that the play is cursed. So we have William Charles McCready. He was a British actor who was considered to be the best British actor of that time. He was born on March 3rd, 1793, and he died on April 27th, 1873. He played the role of Macbeth over a 30-year period, and it was the role he chose to play as his retirement performance. Nice. He was retired for 30 years? He was retiring for 30 years? A long build-up to his retirement? What? You said it was his retirement performance. Yeah. He played Macbeth over a 30-year period, and he chose to, as his last play that he did, it was Macbeth. That was his retirement. But for 30 years. Oh, he quit after he did a Macbeth. Oh, my goodness. I'm just thinking that this guy had this long, elaborate plan to retire. It's a 30-year plan, and all I'm going to do to build up to this retirement is play Macbeth No. And then he was going to retire. He played other roles. He chose the role of Macbeth for his last performance. Well, that ruins everything I was just thinking about. I don't know what you were thinking. I don't know how you got that. Ruins everything. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm just picturing in my mind, this guy did nothing but Macbeth for 30 years, and it was a long con to retire. Mm, No, I don't know how that would be a long con. There was some sort of con in it. (laughs) Okay. He was devious with his Macbeth playing. No, I don't know how you got any of that out of the sentence I just said. I'm sorry. Not, I'm not following your thread there. All right. So Edwin Forrest was a very popular American actor. He was born on March 9th, 1806, and he died on December 12th, 1872. McCready was 13 years older than Forrest, so he had a little more life and acting experience. And both traveled all over the world and were well known for their performances in Shakespeare being considered specialists in this field. Shakespeare specialists. Shakespeare specialists. And I will say, you will have to look up the pictures of them. McCready looks like a pretty normal, just normal guy. But Forrest looks, just looks like he is a troublemaker. (laughs) His whole demeanor, his whole face, looks like he just walked around thinking, can I cause some trouble? It made me laugh looking at their pictures. So there are ju- people that look like that. There are. Like he, that is their whole sole purpose in life is to cause problems. Yes. And I mean, he is definitely like the antagonist of the two of them. Here, I actually have some pictures. All right. That's Forrest guy. on your right and McCready on the left. If you... Go back one picture, you'll see McCready like through his whole career. There's pictures of him from when he was younger to when he's older. So my man, Billy Mac, as I call him, Mm. Billy Mac, 
So which one was the crazy one? The one with the crazy hair. The Kramer hair. Yeah. He, he, this one picture, he kind of looks like he knows he just did something yeah. <laughs> really that he shouldn't have done. But he's, but like, he's proud. But he's kind of smirking about yeah. it. He's proud that he did But no one knows what it. he's smirking about. Exactly. He just looks He just looks like a troublemaker. Fair enough. Which just made me laugh. Cause, so people should, you'll have to post them. I will. But nobody ever looks at anything. So <laughs> they'll have to look it up if they, if they feel the need. And they can see all the same pictures we did. So during their acting careers, the popularity of theater and sorry, of theater entertainment was on the rise, and many of the actors had huge followings with very loyal fans. At this time, going to the theater was not just for entertainment, but also used to voice your opinion to other theater goers who may have different views on politics or were in different classes. Sounds like a terrible time. (laughs) I would (laughs) never go to the theater. Ah, my next sentence is, which you are going to be shocked to find out, this made riots at theaters a common event. I can see that happening. Who so, came up with that? I, I don't know. It was just like the norm. And the crazy thing is, so most riots, they're planned out ahead of time. Like it was known that this like you could go to the theater and be caught up in a riot. It was very it was commonplace. Do they have, like, police standing by in riot gear outside of the theaters? No. Why not? (laughs) I don't know, because it was just so common. So it was normal. People, they would get upset, and they could get upset about anything. Like, it could be a theater policy or a piece of music that was played. If people felt like, oh, you know what, that was unpatriotic, or you know what, I just don't like this place's rules, they would revolt by throwing things on the stage or breaking furniture. Like it was nothing for seats to be torn up in these theaters. And then when they're done, they're just like, all right, well, I'm going to go home and have dinner. See you guys later. And See act the like next riot. nothing like they didn't just act like a lunatic in public. Like this was just normal at that time. It's a wild time to be alive. It was so crazy. I was listening to a very funny that this even exists, a theater historian. Mm hmm. And that's what in his article and then the thing I listened to, did like that was just normal. He did not lose a button. That had to be searched for later. Hmm. Seems like most theater historians lose a button off their shirt. No, he did not. At least not in the story I heard. So the other thing that is a little bit odd is that in American theaters, it was very much dominated by British actors. With how the tensions had been high when America was splitting from Britain, I found this comical that they hated Brits, but somehow they would go and see them in plays. Who else are you going to have doing Billy Shakes plays? Americans? Americans. No. I I mean. No. Forrest did it. I would never see one of his plays performed by anyone other than British actors. (laughs) Okay. Because you've seen so many. So if you ever buy me tickets to uh-huh. Shakespeare, Which anything, is very likely. any Shakespeare whatsoever, so I will likely. not go unless it's 100% of a British cast. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Will you? No. Even though they liked to go to the theater and these were all Brits, they, this didn't mean that the actors were immune to Americans showing their wrath to the British actors, though. There's actually an account that I read in 1765. It's called the Stamp Act Riots. And a whole theater was torn apart while the British actors were performing. (laughs) They just kept on performing while destruction was going on around them. They do. And it is normal. And we talk about it a little bit later, too, which just made me laugh. I, I had to. A lot of the stories. That we shows how much better people were back then because if something like that happened now, people would stop, they'd run off the stage, wait for everyone to calm down. Well, they should have. I don't know why they kept going. We need to go back to that. <laughs> no, we don't. I would go to the theater if that happened because then you're getting a good performance. Mm, no. Performance in silence, anyone can do that. But performance while there's a riot going on, that takes acting. Okay. 
Don't dismiss that. I would think it would be terrible. That but we talk a, about it a little bit later, so that's why I'm not really saying anything. That needs to be a new category in the awards for theater. No. Best performance during a riot. No, because riots don't happen like this now. We talk about it a little bit later. That's they why I'm not really saying to. anything. All right. I'm just coming up with great things. No, that would be a terrible award. Because all that would do is just prompt people to go to the theater. We need to, to go back riot. to theater riots. That's all no, I'm saying. We definitely don't. So at first, these two were friends since McCready was kind and helpful to Forrest when he first came to London, but it quickly dissolved into a bitter rivalry. And of course, the media is there to help rile everyone up. So there's already tension between the two countries. So now everyone is going to have an opinion about who is the better actor. So wherever they were, that started to become the theme of these two. Mm -hmm. And the whole situation is also weird because there was a lot of hostility between Irish immigrants and the quote nativist unquote Americans who were really just immigrants who got there first, (laughs) but they felt like they were natives. So they didn't think that way at all and would often be extremely prejudiced against the Irish. Which again, I just find so weird. Just odd. NATF. Native after the fact. Like, but not that long. Like, you have not been in this country for that long. You're like a generation removed from the people that you are looking down on. What are you even thinking? But whatever. How long do you have to live in a country to be native? I don't know. Just a thought. I don't need an answer. Just something to think about. It's a good question. It's for another podcast. Not ours. Oh, it's another one of ours for sure. Oh, okay. People being petty over their native status? No. It's just the podcast we've entitled Questions to Ponder, Answers to Give. (laughs) I'm Andrew. Uh, That sounds like it's boring. (laughs) Not if we're doing it, it won't be. Mm, I see. Okay. All right. But when it came to the two working class of these two groups, they chose to put their differences to the side and their disgust for Britain helped to fuel what would become the Astor Place riot. So you're an Irish immigrant. I feel like I am a true American. I hate you. But guess what? You're my buddy when it comes to hating Britons. (laughs) We can't stand British. We can't stand them, Britons. So the upper class, the rich pants, if you will. Is that what they were called? The rich pants? Mm, that's what or I call them. is that what you call them? They were on McCready's side. And then you had the lower working class on Forrest's side. Forrest's is, uh, it's hard to say. Basically, these two took on the role, on this role, unbeknownst to them of Britain and America with each side representing the views of their countries, which I think Forrest was a little bit more into it because, as I said, he seems like he's a little bit of of a troublemaker and he enjoyed all the attention that that Mm -hmm. all this was causing. So both men toured each other's countries before this event took place, with McCready being on his third and what would become his final tour of America. And the media comes into play again with with them backing the American actor Forrest. So during this time, the newspapers were basically just praising Forrest and doing everything they could to try to make McCready look bad. So while McCready McCready is on his tour, Forrest decides it would be a great idea to start his own tour literally right behind McCready. And he did this to challenge McCready to see who could perform the play better. So who could so do he whatever play? The same tour that he did, just right behind him. Right behind him. Same play and everything. Say whatever play McCready was doing, he was doing. Didn't matter. He was going to see if he could do it better than him. So this would be akin to somebody gets kicked out of a band. Mm-hmm. They were in a band for twenty years, came up with all these songs, but the band they get kicked out of still plays those songs with a new singer. But he comes behind 
goes to the same venues to play, plays the same songs, and people have to decide which one they like better. I guess. They never acted together or anything like that. Right. I'm saying behind, though. Like, they would play one night. His old band would play one night. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying. I'm just saying these two never acted together. It's not like they were a team Uh, or anything. McCready helped him when he went was over first over in England. But they were never like, hey, we're a team of actors. They don't have to be be together. I mean, I guess it could be the way you said it was. It is. Okay. I mean, I always make things how I want it to be. So (laughs) you you could do the same. It doesn't matter. I will. Thank you. (laughs) All right. So the reason he decides to do this is because while Forrest was on his second tour of London, he was less popular than on his first trip. He was received well, but when he tried his hand at Macbeth, the performance was hissed at by the audience. Maybe it was just a bunch of snakes instead. And he didn't realize it. it. Yeah, he didn't realize that that was what it was. He chose, though, to convince himself that the reason for this was somehow McCready's fault. Obviously. I couldn't find anywhere where he made the correlation and was like, yep, this is definitely McCready's doing. If but anything ever goes wrong, it's always your nemesis fault. That's I just guess. Nemesis 101. No. Yeah. Well, to get back at McCready, he pulled a Michael Scott and he went to one of his performances and he hissed at him loudly. Very loudly. Did he bring a bottle into the theater and <laughs> drop it and let it roll down? He might as well have with how he acted. So this caused McCready to really hit Forrest where it hurts by announcing that Forrest was without taste. (laughs) Whoa, McCready, calm down. Wait, does he not have taste like to taste food or he has no taste in general for finer things? Just no taste in general for finer things. So he can taste food. I think that would be more of an insult to someone. This guy, he can't even taste food. I can. I don't think so. <laughs> Not then. That's, that's uh, about the harshest thing I saw from McCready. <laughs> Whoa. No wonder Forrest couldn't stand him. Who does he think he is? It was terrible. Again, in my own mind in this situation, it's a food argument. It definitely is. Can't taste the food. Mm-hmm. Well, the British press press was a lot a lot harsher, and this lost him any respect he had with the public there. So Forrest tried to defend himself with a letter to the Times, where he said that he both applauded and hissed. So he did both. That he makes it claimed, better. yeah. Well, I mean, remember though, at the time, like that was normal. Like if for the crowds would be a little bit rowdy sometimes. And if they felt like you were a bad performer, they would hiss. If they liked what you were doing, they'd like stand up and applaud. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, woo, I'm going to bring back hissing great. at someone when I don't like what they're doing. I'm just going to go. <laughs> I'm not even going to tell someone they're doing anything bad. I'm just going to walk up to them. <laughs> That's all. We're going to bring it back. As I always say, it will only go well. <laughs> You'll see. The whole country is going to be hissing, and it's going to be because of me. Oh, yeah. It will definitely become a thing. I don't even know what I would do if someone walked up to me, didn't like how I looked, didn't like what I was wearing, whatever the reason, they just came up and hissed at me. I would probably laugh. I was just going to say, I don't think I could not not laugh. I'd probably look them up and down from head to toe Mm -hmm. and then just shake my head and laugh and walk away. But then when the next person started hissing at me, I'd be like, man, there's a movement started. This is a trend. This is a thing. Well, I don't think it worked like that. I think it worked more for when people were up on stage performing. I don't think that people went around back then hissing at each other. Well, I'm taking it up in in public. I mean, maybe they did and it just didn't say, but I don't think they did. It definitely needs to be. Mm -hmm. All right. So for no, you agree. You know, Uh, you want to say it's a great idea. I mean, I kind of want to hiss at people. I'm not saying I'm not. Jo- I wouldn't join in and be hissing. Hissing buddies. <laughs> hissing buddies. All right. All right. So Forrest claims he was mainly hissing at a fancy dance, quote unquote, a fancy dance that McCready did while performing Hamlet. 
It was a, quote, desecration of the scene, unquote. And so he hissed. So apparently, McCready's up there. Uh, He's feeling his performance. And so he starts doing a fancy dance that isn't in Hamlet, I guess. And McCready, or Forrest, who knows it, is like, McCready, your dancing sucks. Would it have been better if it was a trashy dance versus a fancy one? Or just Any dancing dance. in general, he did just, not like. He did not like it. It was a desecration of the scene. Didn't like it. And then in response to people saying he was jealous of McCready, Forrest wrote the following. As to the pitiful charge of, quote, professional jealousy, unquote, preferred against me, I dismiss it with the contempt it merits, confidently relying upon all those of the profession with whom I have been associated with, associated for a refutation of the slander. So he's saying, everybody that knows me is going to refute that. I'm not jealous. These are all lies. It always goes well when you're a famous person and you talk back about how someone's criticizing you. It always mm-hmm. goes well. Well, that's Instead why I brought this up. Instead of just keeping your mouth shut exactly. and just letting it blow over. But it was so bad. Like it ruined his, his whole reputation over in Britain. And I think he had wanted to maybe possibly tour over there again. And so this was basically his way of going on Twitter. <laughs> He, he just wrote to the Times and he had them put this letter that he wrote in there. It really was. The editorials back then were Twitter. Yes, they were today's social media. They were because and then everybody would read them and the media just they really, really would get people so riled up about this stuff. It just ma- it makes me think like this is just what people do. This is how people want to live. They want to be riled up about something. They don't care. Just give them something so they can have an opinion and be all annoyed about it. We're going to have to talk about this on next week's episode because for the one that I'm doing, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of editorial writing. And I I just made that connection that that is the Twitter of the times. Well, it is. And the reason I also wanted to write or read what Forrest wrote in this letter is remember during the. Thomas Jefferson and mm-hmm. Adams one, you were like, people don't write like that. This was proof. Like his whole letter is so wordy and so just unlike anything that we, how we talk now that it was making me laugh. And I was like, and Andrew thought people don't talk like that. They did. That's just how they talked. They talked and hissed. And they, during that time, they all used the papers to their benefit. Get people all riled up. So because of this scandal, though, and this letter that he wrote in the Times, and everybody is very aware of this back and forth between the two of them, on McCready's third tour, he was constantly being harassed. (laughs) He had half of the carcass of a sheep thrown at him while he was performing. And I was like, how did they get this sheep into the theater? Was it the top half? Did they put a little like coat around it and a hat and wig? and was just like, just me and my darling going into the theater. Don't mind them. Had their arm around, (laughs) pretend it was a person walking alongside, had a seat. And then we got to the right part. (laughs) Take and hurl it up on stage. How close do you have to be to the stage to hurl half of a sheep carcass? I've got lots of thoughts about this right now. I have lots of thoughts, and I'm going to let you know all of them. Okay. First of all, imagine the planning that went into bringing half of a sheep carcass into the place, because you have to think they tested it out at home, killed all these poor sheep just to, to, for trial and error. A whole They're carcass probably, is too much. So they tried different ways to bring a whole sheep carcass in. They probably figured it out, but then they realized it was too heavy to throw. So like, all right, let's tone it down to a half. We'll still get the point across. So then they're trying to figure out how to bring it in. A couple of your ideas were good, but I think ultimately they decided to push it in in a baby carriage. (laughs) Because that seems like the easiest way to get it into the theater. So they're pushing it in to, you know, they just got it covered over the, oh, shh, baby's sleeping. 
So they've got this carriage with them and they're just rocking it back and forth. So no one gets suspicious of them the whole time. So they're just one person always has their hand on Mm -hmm. the cradle back and forth, back and forth. So then this whole thing is teamed up where everybody that they're with, they have a group of like 10 people Mm -hmm. and the other nine people who didn't come in with this baby carriage, they're all sitting relatively close. Mm -hmm. They all have a piece of a giant slingshot. (laughs) That they all put together <laughs> at some point when they know this guy, he needs a sheep carcass. So they make the signal to each other. They put these pieces together. They assemble it. Mm-hmm. They get it attached to the chair. Everyone's like, oh, I got to take my baby out to feed it. And they take the sheep carcass out, put it in the slingshot. Pew! Half a sheep carcass on the stage. I mean, it had to have been... a. Quite the elaborate planning, though, to get it in. <laughs> As you were saying to the baby, I'm just imagining they're just like, yeah, good thing that our baby sleeps like the dead. And then looking around all like, I hope that wasn't they too obvious. Probably went through a lot of sheep for trial and error. I have to think. It's such a weird thing. to. And then they went and sold the system to other people in other towns. You want a dead carcass up there? How about a sheep you dead want a carpet good reaction. carcass? Throw it, throw half a sheep carcass up. Half, we figured it all out. Don't, don't second guess us. Yep. Just go with it. Nothing says I hate your performance more than a half sheep carcass. Another thing we need to do when we go back in time, we need to figure out the full carcass. Yeah. I feel like half is a little bit more terrifying. Yeah, actually, half is probably more insulting. Sawn in half. But which half, front or back? I would say the top part. I think. Each half probably depicts how disgusted you are with what you just saw. Oh, yeah. Because if you do like the bottom half, it was a really stinky performance. But if you do the top head, it was a horrifying performance. (laughs) It's just wild. It's wild no matter way you put it. It's so stupid. But the thing that makes it even sadder is McCready really tried to avoid all the drama. Like he just he he wanted nothing to do with this. He had no beef with Forrest. He didn't care. Mm -hmm. Forrest is the a-hole in this entire thing. Like, he just keeps sucking McCready back in. And McCready's like, just leave me alone. I just want to perform my Shakespearean plays. Macbeth being my favorite. Get out of my face. But Forrest, he can't let it go. So we have the working class people that backed Forrest were very outspoken and he had a huge connection with them. The main group who were his vocal supporters were two groups called the Bowery Boys and Tammany Hall politicians or Tammany Hall men, which there is no like really good just group names anymore like when i heard the bowery boys it uh, obviously took me back to that same seinfeld one that we've already talked about i think i think that's a great name the bowery boys it is better than the jets and the sharks well no i'm just talking about like just random groups that are like we like to hang out this is our group name the bowery boys I don't know, like like the Tammany Hall politicians or the Tammany Hall men. I the like Bowery that one too. Boys. <laughs> it's just it's something. People really need to bring back names. Yeah, just bring bring back names to your groups. Come well, up with a fun name. At least be creative about it. It would be fun. So Forrest made his debut at a theater that catered mostly to the working class. That's why they were so connected to him. That's why they were such big fans and were really supportive of him. They preferred Forrest's muscular frame and his down to down to earth American performances compared to McCready's more subdued and sophisticated way. To get away from the unsavory immigrant immigrant crowds, the wealthy had built the Astor Place Opera House. This place was taken like a slap in the face to the working class. Since theaters were originally created for all as a place to gather, no matter the status, but the Astor Place had a strict dress code that excluded the working class done just for that reason. So they're building this place and they're just like, what can we do to keep the unsavory out? And that was their answer. 
Since the Astor Place couldn't survive on just showing operas, they renamed it Astor Place Theater. And this is where McCready was set to perform Macbeth. Forrest was scheduled to play Macbeth a few blocks away at the huge Broadway Theater. Are you following? I'm following 100%. <laughs> I'm just trying to think about what they would possibly do to keep these people out. I mean, anybody could buy anything. What you if you did not have the right clothes on, you could not go in. So you could buy the ticket, but they had a strict dress dress code. So you buy a tuxedo. Well, if you really like the theater. But that's why they did it. They can't afford a tuxedo. They can't afford these clothes that they were saying you have to wear these. So then it kept them out. Class discrimination. I I mean, really it was. Three nights before this riot took place, McCready was at Astor House performing. Forrest supporters bought hundreds of tickets to the top level, level of the Astor Opera House and ended up stopping the whole performance. They threw rotten eggs, potatoes, apples, lemons, shoes, bottles of stinking liquid, and ripped up the seats. You think they sprayed fart spray? <laughs> I was hoping that you would say that. It had to have been either farting or puke spray. One or the other. <laughs> it's the go-to for petty people. I gotta say, eggs are one thing because they're not going to hurt anybody. Rotten eggs, though. Potatoes, you're... Who cares? I mean... Rotten eggs. It's going to smell smelled? bad, yes. but it's not going to hurt someone. Someone gets whipped in the head with a potato, that they're going to go unconscious. A potato, though... I think it was probably along the lines of like the rotten potatoes, rotten apples. like Rotten those, shoes? No, their shoes are probably just like. Shoes weighed about 5,000 pounds back then. I that ran out of, I ran of my eggs, potatoes, apples, and lemons and my bottles of stinking liquid. But I'm still angry. Ah, I'm going to throw my shoe. What if they all stepped in rotten eggs in their shoes before they went and then probably? threw the rotten smelling shoes on the stage? Just for good measure, they probably just had really stinky feet, too. So they're like, ha smell my stinky they feet. They didn't wear socks to the theater that night. Mm-hmm. Everyone walked out barefoot. They, they, had to, they, they had to do what they had to do to prove a point. So they rip up the seats as well. It's just so, it's so insane. I, I was reading that, and I was like, you know what? Next time I go to the movies, if I don't like the movie, I'm just going to try to rip my seat up, which is going to be harder. I mean, that's really a power It's a big play. recliner. That would be hard. But I'm going to try. I'm going to, if I don't like it, I'm just ripping my recliner seat right up just to prove how much I don't like this movie. I empower you to try it. Thank you. But that really was a power play to buy all those tickets up just to Mm -hmm. crash the show. That's, that's what they did. That's how much they loved Forrest. They were big, big supporters of him. Now, the funniest part is, Like we talked about before, the performers tried to continue despite the fact the crowd was hissing and groaning at them and crying out, shame, shame, along with down with the codfish aristocracy. (laughs) Aristocracy. Aristocracy. There you go. I have a hard time saying that word. They ended up just pantomiming their performance since no one could hear over the crowd. Don't stop the performance. Again, so much better back then than now. Don't stop the performance. Just continue on while everything is crashing down. That's right. Don't around stop. You. Keep going. Just keep going. No! I want to bring that back. Okay, so I'm getting pelted with the disgusting things, but I should continue to on my way? You're How never, does that make any sense? You're never going to win my award, that's for sure. I definitely won't, and I don't want your stupid award. Oh, I got knocked out from this potato that hit me in the head, and then while I was down, some guy's stinky boot landed on top of my face. You're being so well, petty right now. look at this now. Re- award I got. You're being so petty right now. You're going to be up for the Bill Gross Award. <laughs> I'm not being petty because I don't want to get pelted by items. Sounds like it. I just want to tear some seats off. (laughs) I say good for them for continuing. No, not good for them. Go off. I'm going to nominate them posthumously for best performance. I don't understand how them getting pelted by dangerous things is. How? How is that impressive? 
They didn't You're quit. getting hurt over a dumb performance? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's insanity. You got to stand up to the bullies. That's not standing up to the bullies. That's allowing yourself to be pummeled when you can just but who's get gonna, out of the way. Who's going to look better at the end of this? The person that stood up to them or these? Neither. Neither. You look like an idiot while you're getting pelted with stuff and you're still pantomiming this play. At this point, who's watching the performance? Who is like, you guys, shh. The people that bought the cheaper tickets. No, these guys bought the t- the cheaper tickets. That's why they're way up in the okay, nosebleed. Well, then the people that bought the good tickets, because that's their thing they wanted to see. They spent their so, hard-earned working class money to see this performance. They are going to see it through and no, give these people what they want. These are wanted. the rich people up front. This is at the Astor place. Where oh, you have, at the Astor. Yes, that's yes. what I said. This is at the Astor Opera House. They bought the top level tickets. So not only do you have these people throwing stuff to the stage, if you have somebody who is not, doesn't have a good arm as a crowd below, you're going to get pelted with this stuff too. So well, then they I'm deserve there, an award for sitting there and watching the show. No, I would have gotten up and, and hauled ass out of there. I would have stayed right there. No, you would not. Absolutely. Have. The first egg that hit you on your head, you would have been out of there. I might have vomited, but I would stay there and watch no, the show. You can't handle smells. No. You would have been out of there. You would have been gone. I would have stayed there and I would have watched them stay and do their performance. Lies. All All lies. And I can't believe that we're having such a debate going back and forth about performers not just getting out of the way while they're getting pummeled. We need this debate. It needs to be an open and honest discussion about how (laughs) wimpy people have gotten today. That is... prove anything with a whip that's that's proving that you have no common sense that you don't move out of the way of projectiles being hurled at you what if they included that in the performance like they were just dodging them everywhere that they went okay that would also be very stupid but probably really funny to, to watch I'm starting to break you down. No, I still would be like, they're such idiots. Why are they dodging? Just get off of the stage. No, I I don't understand how that would even. Because I want to start this award. I'm sorry. Yeah, this award needs to be given out. No, it does not. Anyway, don't anyway me over at Forrest's performance of Macbeth. It was going splendidly. Because McCready does not have a bunch of insane followers. When he got to Macbeth's line, that is, what rhubarb, senna, or what purgative drug will scour these English hens? The crowd loves it. They stand up. They start cheering for him, hooting and hollering. They're so happy about this line. And he should have gotten up and ran off the stage because they were hooting and hollering. No, it was all, they were cheering. They were happy for him. They loved it. Could have been bad. He should have ran off. No. You're not going to run off to be people clapping and being like, yeah, woo. It could have been a false front. No, it definitely was not. Because again, he, he isn't up against a crazy person like himself. Poor McCready has no idea what's going on. Also, I really want a strawberry rhubarb pie now. I'm craving it. I haven't had one in years. Mom, if you're listening, you got to make me a strawberry rhubarb pie. Make me a huckleberry pie. Huckleberry? You've never eaten a huckleberry pie in your whole life. Neither have you. I didn't say I wanted a huckleberry pie. I wanted a strawberry rhubarb pie. So after McCready's insane crowds... During his performance, he's out of here. He goes, I'm leaving. I'm on the next boat. I'm getting out of here. This is too much insanity for me. But for some reason, he lets himself be swayed by a petition signed by 47 well-to-do New Yorkers, including authors Herman Melville and Washington Irving. Those are two of your favorite authors. Offers. Authors. They are well-known authors. I said they were your favorite. No. They said in their letter, this is part of it, it says, the good sense and respect for order prevailing in this community will sustain you on the subsequent nights of your performance. 
they were wrong. (laughs) He listened to them and performed Macbeth on May 10th. To help support him, the city stationed a militia company with horses and artillery in Washington Square Park. The opera house was fortified with its windows barricaded. Policemen were stationed in and out with the audience screened when entering the building. Screening them for half sheep. They were. So there's no disguising your sheep as your girlfriend or a baby this time. So they did have riot police. Well. Basically. Now. Right now. that All of this. Crowds gathered outside ready to storm the theater. They handed out handbills denouncing McCready and his fans as British subjects imposing their values on Americans, which riled up the Irish immigrants in the mob. When McCready took the stage, things started to move quickly. The crowd outside decided that despite all the police and the militia, they were going to rush the opera house. There were 100 policemen and 350 militia, along with 150 police inside. What is going on that you need 600 armed people to protect this one actor? And that is what the people there back then were thinking, too. Knowing full well the reaction to have this many armed men was because this area was full of the elite and their homes. So it made them even angrier that they had this crazy response to what was about to happen. So basically, this whole thing is all about class. It is. They made it seem like it was they were just mad at McCready. But this is where that whole class distinction and their anger still with Britain is coming into play. (laughs) Since the rioters knew that there would be this type of response, they prepared as well, handing out handbills and posters in saloons and restaurants days before the performance. These either the the pamphlets or the posters they said shall americans or english rule this city they also handed out free tickets to mccready's may 10th show and made plans for where people should deploy so they were well prepared rioters the thing to do something that just happened not too long ago about 18 months ago (laughs) what so guess how many people had gathered outside the theater at 7.30 when the play was scheduled to open? Not counting all the police? Yep. These are just, these are, we're not talking about the 650 police slash militia that they have ready to help protect. 2,500. Not even close. 10,000. 10,000 people. Ten. 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 Ten thousand. They there was ten thousand people Do outside. Do I get any points for getting it right on my second guess? Sure. How many? Ten thousand. Ten thousand points to zero. Guess who's winning? <laughs> you are winning against yourself because nobody else is playing. Do you want a wor- an award for that too? I should. I sat here and stuck through all of your blasphemy towards me. Mm. Blasphemy of the dumbest award I've ever heard. You'll be jealous when people start winning it and talking about it and everyone's going for it. Will I? And then you're going to be inviting people here to throw things at you so that you can win it. No. Best podcast performance while under duress. (laughs) While under duress. No. So this crowd, they are not messing around. They bombarded the theater with stones and fought with the police. Those inside and out tried to set the building on fire. It was so loud in the theater, McCready finished the play in Dumb Show and had to leave the theater in disguise. Do you know what Dumb Show is? No. Dumb Show is what they called it when the actors have to mime their show. And they call it that because it's so dumb. It's dumb. I hate it. No one can hear you at this point. There's, hey, there's a riot going on. Maybe, maybe stop the show. Hey, there's 10,000 people outside that want to kill you, McCready, for nothing, really, that has anything to do with you. Did they check to see if any of these people were Antifa? They did not. (laughs) All a setup. 
They should have thought about that back then. So things are raging out of control. So the authorities have to call the troops in because the 650 people that they have there now are like crazy outnumbered. So they arrive at 915 because, again, they're prepared. But then they themselves are attacked. So the crowd starts to pelt the troops with bricks. This leads to the the soldiers lining up. They open fire first into the air above the crowd and then at point blank range into the crowd since they were in fear of being overrun because they are even sending in these the, the troops like they're still outnumbered by all of the people that are there. So many bystanders were killed and wounded because a lot of people are just there to because, again, this is like the thing that happens like riots <laughs> at theaters. This is entertainment. So at a lot the time. of people were there just to watch just to watch. They're, they're not partaking. They're just like, oh, what's going to happen with this whole thing? Which <laughs> just... I'd go to watch. Oh, whatever. You would not. Just a people watch. Absolutely. Whatever. So. Uh, all I'm thinking is just like there the, uh, to me, this sounds nothing like this is just sheer chaos. There's sheer chaos happening everywhere around. And you still have this idiot pantomiming up on the stage. All I'm going to say is if they want the theater to be popular again. They need to bring this back. No. There's a no, reason it was so popular, you. and this is why. No. So Not people, because of the fact that TV wasn't popular and moving pictures didn't exist. It was all because it of the all was riots. the riots. Well, people started using the salons or the saloons and shops to lay the dead and wounded. A quote from the New York Tribune at the time said, as one window after another cracked, the pieces of bricks and paving stones rattled in on the terraces and lobbies. The confusion increased till the opera house resembled a fortress besieged by an invading army rather than a place meant for the peaceful amusement of civilized community. McCready, he asked to leave the theater through a back exit and he makes it to his hotel because remember, again, he's in disguise. There was real concern that the rioters would find out where he was staying and try to get at him there and kill him. How Fortunately, he, this doesn't di- happen. Even in disguise, how does he get out? What did they put him in a box and like wheel him down I the street? I don't know. That is actually what I was thinking too because if there's 10,000 people, I was like, what did no, none of these people, none of the 10,000 people were like, you guys, let's go around the back. I think he might try to get out of the back. Nobody was checking that. Unless there was some underground, like, entrance that they would use for people that wanted to come in the theater, maybe? I mean, it could be, but it didn't say, like, he used this this secret entrance to get in and out. Unless they just dressed him up as a sheep and no one would have known the difference. <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys keep going. That's just your sheep carcass you brought to throw on the stage? Oh, you're cool. Go on. Oh, wow, you got it. some legs that can walk? That's genius. I like your thinking. I might use it next time. Bye. See you guys later. It was a man in sheep's clothing. It was. That's how we got there. So he leaves. They don't find him. He flees to Boston. The next day, everyone is still riled up. They're even angrier now because all these people got killed. So people gather in lower Manhattan and they're just as determined as the day before to attack the opera house again. But when they try to head towards it, the police block their advance. They're 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 even more prepared than the day before. So somehow peace is restored. Everyone calms down. So this is the last riot like this in theaters since it got so out of hand. Everyone realized that things had to change. So there was more policing and the middle class attitude changed. So there was couth now while attending shows. So that is my story. That's sad. What? That there's couth now? That it all ended. Oh. Yeah, I'm always you, up for a good riot. Yeah, you, know you. Oh my gosh! If all the time you're saying, "Why do I we always have say a good riots riot? are very compelling?" No, you don't. So that is how two actors had a little feud over who was the best one. Just really, a, just a little one. Really, it was much more. It was two actors. It was disguised as two actors fighting over who was the best. But really, it was just a discussion about society and class. Mm -hmm. Done in the most petty way possible. So ridiculous. Hmm. 
I'd heard about that, but never knew all of the solid deets. Well, now you have them. Never heard of it. And I think it is so insane. <laughs> so silly. Well, that's interesting. All right. Well, now we can go over to the Petty Round Table and we can talk about it. I feel like I've already we, we, given a lot of my ideas away. We have away. done a lot of ideas. And I think that's the one flaw in our podcast is we give so many of our de- ideas away. But then the Petty Round Table would be about 40 minutes long versus 10 minutes long. Yeah. I'll co- I've got more, though. All right. Well, let's Let's go. head over and I'll tell you all about it. All right. We're here. We are. You used up so many good ideas. But I have more. All right. So I know you didn't really appreciate the fact that I felt that these guys should have just kept performing. My God. I knew. I knew it. I knew you were going to bring this back up. You couldn't couldn't let it lie. Never. (laughs) I'm going to bring this up every week for the rest of our podcast. All right. But for now, mm-hmm. what do you think about Japanese game shows? They're crazy. And they're super fun to watch. So you think those are fun? I think to that watch. those are fun to watch. So what if mm-hmm. in our time machine, we bring back a whole Japanese game show and the whole point is getting both of them to compete against each other in random Billy Shakes plays? Macbeth, whatever you want. While a riot is going on? No, no riot. Okay. So this whole thing is based on the fact that they're going to be judged by the audience on their performance. Mm -hmm. If their performance is good, nothing happens to them. So say they're performing bad and they are not the person that wins this particular round. One of them, like there's a trap door underneath them or something, and they get dropped into a pit of rotten eggs. Mm-hmm. And then they go on to the next round. They don't have time to clean up, you know, just maybe a quick brush off. Then they go on to the next round and they draw another random. They have to know all the plays. They have to know the lines. Mm-hmm. They have to know every scene. So then they go to the next one. Maybe that same person doesn't get voted as the best that time too. They get dropped. They get from the ceiling dropped potato salad with sheep hooves in it or something sheep hooves we're getting there yeah we're getting there okay i just feel like their whole competition got lost in the whole class warfare that went on so i think once and for all we need to decide and know who was the better who was the better Macbeth actor and, and I think the Japanese only way to decide style. it is a, be, have them be on a Japanese game show. Decided by Japanese game show style. But that actually would be really funny. Have a whole audience of, to make it fair, the audience has to be some of the working class and some of the upper class people together mm-hmm. so that it, there's, it's fair. They can vote however they want. Do they have an applause? Meeting? And the people have masks on, just like the masked singer, so they don't know which one is which. <laughs> How can you tell the performance then? By their, the way they give it, their actions, their gestures, their body language. Well, they had very different body types, so they'd have to be fully. All right, well, they're going to be full on mascots. Mm. They're going to be in full on mascot costumes. So they're not going to know which one is which, Mm -hmm. but both classes have to be there. They're going to be basically the same mascot, but different colors so that they can't even say, oh, I like that mascot better. So uh, that's funny that you say like full on mascot, because I was thinking about how Washington Irving is a huge McCready fan. And I'm like, they couldn't have done anything to help him out. Because, you know, he wrote Sleepy Hollow. Mm-hmm. So he couldn't have, like, if he, they were doing a mascot style, though, that he could have helped him out. Because then he could have been like, you can do a play instead of Macbeth to do it as Sleepy Hollow. And he is the, the guy with the pumpkin for the head. <laughs> That's their disguise. There you go. They both have pumpkin heads on. So they do it Washington Irving style. 
And then each time they lose, the punishment is more and more. Just more and more severe. But, but, while they're getting punished, if they keep performing, they get some sort of a reward. Like an award for oh best God. performance while being punished on a Japanese game show. <laughs> I would agree to all this except for that award. That award is going to They either win the whole thing and get a prize or nothing. No. There's going to be, at the end of it, whoever performs the best during one of their punishments, they get best performance during a Jap- j- during, while punished during a Japanese game show. All right, well. That's mine. You can't take it away from me. I'm not taking it away from you. It would be funny to watch. And you would watch it. I would watch as it. As would many other people. It, that's better than just some randos out in the audience pelting them with eggs and stuff. I'm trying to make it better for They're everyone. They're aware that they are on this game show and that I could be dropped into a bin of rotten eggs. Like that makes it a little bit better. I'm just trying to make things better and fair for everyone, including you, because I want you to feel part of this whole culture. Okay. Can't believe you're so against this. Against your award? Yeah, I am. All right, well, that is our show, though. I still can't believe you're so against. <laughs> I can't believe that you're just so for performing it. Performing under duress. No, there shouldn't be. You shouldn't perform under duress. That's silly. Who continues to do something that is causing them pain? You just stop because that's more logical. You don't continue on. All I'm saying is they could have dodged every single thing that came to the stage. No, they definitely could not have. And then they're like two fourths of the way to EGOT because they can get a performance for they that didn't plus have one EGOT. for that. Again, this is my world. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to take that away from you. There was no EGOT back then. There they was had no, EGOTs back then. There was no EGOTing. No. They absolutely went for EGOTs back then. They did not. So. Go to our website. You are ending this abruptly. I am. You don't want to talk about this anymore. That's nope. how much you hate it. It's, it's over. All right. <laughs> let's talk petty.com. Alexa loves it. What is it about how I say let's? Let's a? Uh? Maybe because I right do there. that. Let's a talk Let's a talk a petty. <laughs> I guess that's how I talk. <laughs> I add every word in A, and Lex is like, I love it. Let's a talk a petty. She doesn't like it when you do it. Only when I do it. Nope. Go to our website, letstalkpetty.com. Stream all of our old podcasts. Find something you like. We've got well over 40 of them there now. So there's something for everyone. Find, think about one of your friends. Think about what they like. Send them an episode of something that they will like because i can promise you there will be at least one topic that one of your friends will like and just listen to all of them because we got some update and we have to do we got an update on the nish kapoor one we have an update on the elon musk one we will do a bill gross episode again lots of not really an update on it but just a just another new one lovely pettiness because he was petty guy and you never know, because you might get a random update on a mini episode like we got today. That's right. So listen to them all so you know exactly what we're talking about when Kate gives mini updates on correcting her <laughs> wrongness. <laughs> we had to update on our wrongness on uh, what's-his-face having gonorrhea. He only had, maybe possibly had syphilis. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we're always here for the facts. Yeah, it's fun. We're not medical doctors, but... We do the best we can. With the information we have. So we will see you next time. Kate will see you, but I'll talk to you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. Please be sure and give our show a review wherever you listen to your podcast. And be sure to follow and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Bye.